dental caries indices. So we're going to look at different types of index used to assess for caries or to um, evaluate for caries. So the first one we're going to look at is DMFT, also D, you could, you could um, call it DMFS, depending on what you're talking about. So if we're talking about teeth, we say DMFT. If we're talking about surfaces, then we say DMFS. But let's look at what D stands for. So D stands for decayed, M stands for missing, F stands for filled teeth. And then DMFS, again, decayed, missing, filled surfaces in this case. So what this does, it determines um, the status of dental caries. It determines how much caries someone has, and um, it's looking at how much decayed teeth you have, how much teeth you have missing due to cavities. So again, missing teeth um, are not, you know, those that have been extracted uh, for ortho purposes, are not those that are like the wisdom teeth extracted. These missing teeth are extracted due to caries. So the cavity was so bad that the teeth had, to, or the tooth had to be extracted. And then filled teeth are those that had restorations like composite or amalgam. So what you do here is you look at each tooth. Actually, I have a scenario here. So I could look at the one seven and I could and I could check all areas of the mouth and see if there's any decayed area in one seven. If if one seven is completely missing, perhaps because um, of cavities, past cavities, or if one seven is filled. And based on what I see, I would record um, like, like I would record it in here. So let's actually practice that. So let's say I look at the one seven and I see that when a one seven is um, decayed. Okay, so let's say this is decayed. Then I look at the one six and the one six has a filled tooth. So I'm going to put F over here. There is a filling on the occlusal. Then I look at the one five and I find one five is okay. I'm not going to, there's no cavity, so I'm not going to say anything. I'm not going to put anything down. I look at the one four and I notice that there is no one four. And then when I look at the history, the patient history, when I look at their chart, I notice that one four had been extracted because of caries, not because of ortho, not because, um, and again, it's not a wisdom teeth, so it won't be extracted because it's a wisdom tooth. One four was extracted because of caries. So here I could say that this was missing. And again, I do the same thing. I go along and, and check to see if there's any decayed teeth. And let's say I saw another decayed teeth over here. I saw lots of fillings. So there's fillings here, there's fillings here. Uh, this person has a lot of restorations, lots of fillings. Um, and, and that's it. So one missing two. So let's let's look at it. We saw how many D's did we see over here? We saw two decayed tooth uh, or teeth. We saw one missing teeth, and we saw so how many F's did we see? We saw one, two, three. So one, two, three, four, five, six, six. Then you add it all up, and according to this client's um, dentition. We saw a seven, eight, nine. So the, their DM of T score is nine. Now this is DM of T. If I were to do DMFS, okay. So if I were to do DMFS, I would I would be looking at each surface and be and checking each surface to see if all the, if the surfaces are decayed or not. If the surfaces have any filled areas or not. So I would assess each one individually and give them a score of DMF. For example, so each surface is, is looked alone. Because, for example, you could have a filled um, area on the mesial, but a decayed area on the distal. So that, that all gets incorporated into the DMFS score. So in this case, what you need to know is that you have, if you have a low DMFT score, that's better. Okay? So the lower the DMFT score, the better it is. When we're looking at primary teeth, okay, so primary teeth, instead of saying DMFT or DMFS, we say DEFT for teeth or DEFS for surfaces. And notice it's in lowercase. You see how this is all in lowercase? So the reason why it's in lowercase is to differentiate the primary dentition from the uh, adult or permanent dentition. So D stands for decayed. So again, we look for any decayed teeth. Then we look to see if any teeth have been it needs an extraction because of caries. So perhaps the decay was so bad that it needs an extraction. So E means an extraction is soon needed. And F looks at filled teeth. Okay. And then what you do, you could also do it by surfaces where you look at each surface separately, or you could look at it by teeth. 
where you look at each tooth as a whole. That's kind of what I did earlier, right over here. So either whatever you decide, DEFT or DEFS, DEFT or DEFS, you would tally it up um, accordingly. And again, the lower the score, the better it is. There's also something called the root caries index, and the root caries index looks at the cavities in the root. Okay, so if we're looking at the, um, why is it not letting me draw? Okay, just, there we go. So if we're looking at the, their, uh, the client's dentition, what we're looking at over here is if there is any caries on the roots. So if I saw caries over here, if I saw caries over here and here, and let's say the gum is over here, if the if they have the client has recession and you see cavities like this, that would be noted within the root caries index. So it's a way to determine the or to look at the caries found in the root. And as we know, the root is more softer than the enamel, so the root is more prone to caries than the enamel. So again, you just note where the caries are on the root and you tally it up that way. Then you divide the sum of the total number of teeth showing the recession and then you multiply it by 100. So this is just an outline of how you can do it. And so the higher this root caries index, the more caries you see on the root, the, the worse it is, right? So this person needs more treatment. So the higher the score, the more diffuse the caries. And lastly, um, this is, I know not a dental caries index, but this is a fluorosis index called the Dean's Index of Fluorosis. And here, this is a good image that looks at how you can differentiate the type of fluorosis your client has. So this is normal. I don't see any white spots, any white streaks. So this person has normal dentition. But when you have something like questionable where you see some white spots over here, you do see some white spots or some few white flecks that goes under the questionable side or, or in classification. Then you can have the very mild classification where you do see some fluorosis, some white um, opaque areas there, but it covers less than 25% of the teeth. So just very little, 25% of the teeth. Um, that is considered very mild. Mild is when you have 50% of the dentition. So I think like half the dentition, you can see there's lots of um, fluorosis right here. So if 50% of the dentition is covered, that is, cons or sorry, less than 50%. It's not quite 50%. That's why it's not, I don't see any fluorosis here, but I do see some fluorosis over here. So if it's less than 50%, it's mild. Moderate is um, when we're looking at the entire dentition, and that is um, quite affected. We see lots of white fluorosis, uh, white lines over here. And you could even see brown stains here. Um, so if you have that, that is moderate. So just follow what you see here. And last one is severe, where you do see pitting. Sometimes you'll see pitting. And pitting is like... It's not as severe here. I mean, this is severe, but I've seen worse. I've seen more pitting involved. But pitting is the brown uh, pits that you see within the enamel. And uh, when the brown stain is present and you see pitting, that is considered severe fluorosis. So depending on what you see when you're looking at your client's teeth, um, they can be classified as normal, questionable, very mild, mild, moderate, or severe.